So One Piece came and it went uh, and it's been renewed for a season two. It's absolutely smashed streaming. It really took the world by storm. It's one of the biggest animes, of, well mangas of all time should I say, sorry. Uh, great anime as well and now a fantastic live action adaptation. But why did it do so well? What's the sort of reason behind it? Why? How can this, how can Netflix, a, a live action anime, a live action manga, how can that embarrass Disney and their streaming shows? Well, it's all about the people behind it and the fact that they give a shit about the source material. I know, it's amazing, right? Who'd have thought it? Well, this guy did. The co-showrunner Matt Owens. And these interviews are fascinating stuff. This is his first interviewed uh, in interview tied to One Piece after the launch of the show. He's never spoken out before. This is a brand new interview. And it's fascinating stuff. So I thought we'd take a look at this uh, and just go to show exactly why. You know, it is, it's such a success. Because uh, it's nice to see. We always sit here and we complain about Hollywood. Let's say some good stuff about it, shall we? So, five weeks into its run, Netflix's One Piece remains firmly in the streamer's weekly top ten. That's incredible. Five weeks, it's still in the top ten. Amassing 57.8 million views to date. For four of them which included One Piece's quick season two renewal, series writer, executive producer, co-show runner Matt Owens was on strike. So for four of the weeks it was out, he was on strike. Now this is his first interview tied to the One Piece launch. Owens speaks about missing the promotional campaign and premiere event for the show, as well as not being able to comment on the critical and rating success of the manga adaptation and its quick renewal. Basically, he's come to say thanks which I think is great. So he reveals that writing for season two has resumed following the end of the WGA strike. So that's great. They wanted to get things going by autumn um, and get things moving. They said a lot of the sort of story elements were ready to go anyway. They just need to nail it down. Uh, and this could be ready to go by next year. So with the writer's room reopening this week, uh, he gives a progress report on the writing process. Uh, Owens also lays out the main theme for season two, provides details about how tag scene at the end of season one finale sets up the new season and shares additional season two clues for fans uh, of Ishiro Oda's best-selling manga. So let's check this out. There's so much stuff. When did you discover One Piece and how did you get involved in its live action adaptation? I've been an anime fan my entire life. You know what? I can believe him. One Piece specifically I tried to dive into when I was younger and getting into a lot of other series like Naruto, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z. But One Piece was a little difficult because the company that was dubbing it in English notoriously did a horrible job. A man that just says it like it is. Uh, it turned a lot of people off. It stripped out some of the heart. It stripped out some of the danger of the world. So I dropped it. Uh, as I got older and continued in the genre, there was always a very vocal fan base for One Piece. Guys, you need to read it. You need to give it a try. I just never did. Uh, and he did in his early 20s, basically. So how did you feel then not being able to attend the One Piece premiere and watching the series success from the picket lines? It was a little bit tough not being able to experience firsthand or really even talk about it. This was five years of my life getting this show made. I'm very proud of it and I still uh, and I still love to be able to watch it. But not being able to share that, especially with my cast, it was tough. I'm glad that it's out there and I'm glad for the reception that it's gotten. But there was a little bit of a hole in my heart not being able to engage and participate. But I'm thankful. There you go. Now for the opportunity, like with people such as yourself. Someone who cares, ladies and gents. Uh, had all the cuts been finalised by the time the WGA strike started? This is an interesting one. Or were there surprises when you watched the show? We were very close. So, there you go. He got on a meet with Oda in Tokyo. Uh, had some more conversations uh, about where cuts were, some things he wanted to see. So, we were back in post when the strike hit. We were uh, picture locked on most things. So, basically, there was nothing. Not really much. Um, but... He's heartbroken that he didn't get to finish the show. Luckily, post-production team, the effects team, they know me and they know the show. So for having to step away, it was all in good hands. This is a good, cohesive team. Uh, anything you hadn't seen that particularly impressed you? And uh, he's, you know, he's, it's, you know, It turned out that's effing great, things like that. Uh, Mihawk's introductory scene, the battle on the beach, that was something that we talked about a lot. And it was a scene that I was really excited about. It was a scene that Oda was very excited about. And I think it turned out beautifully. 
Uh, the scene at the end of season one finale with a shadowy figure was shot after the fact in the spring. Were you involved in the decision to add it? Yes. Again, someone just absolutely involved in everything. Uh, a good cohesive team. Super important stuff. Uh, da, da, da. What can you tease about how that sets up the second season? So here you go. Season two, lovers. Season one ends with Luffy gaining notoriety. And while it's something that he wants, he wants to be taken seriously as a pirate in this world. As Nami and Zoro say, this is putting a target on your back. A lot of people are going to know you and know your face. And so that tag at the end is really reinforcing that idea that there are people who know, who now know of Luffy's existence and they're going to try to put a stop to him. Character at the end is a very important character moving into our next season. And as Garp says to Luffy as well, you're on your own. While Garp may have been the Marine who was testing Luffy, not every Marine is going to give him any leeway because of who his grandfather might be. And so we're going to see this very powerful, very driven Marine uh, as a major antagonist moving forward in the story. Tell us more about that Marine, Captain Smoker. So that's, yeah, very popular character. Re reappears throughout the manga, so don't worry, he's not going to die next season. Um, but yeah, I love a tag that can give you a nice tease for people who might be new to the adaptation. It just, it's just such good stuff, such good stuff. A rabid excitement. This person clearly loves the show. We were on strike at the time, uh, but had to process casting. Smoker started before the SAG after strike. No one's been cast yet, not only because of both strikes going on, but we were still early in the process. We weren't beyond talking, so that's not been cast at all. Uh, and the talks of Jamie Lee Curtis and people like that. So what's the deal with that? We have opportunities to stunt cast some roles, some rules that are very important. And it came out that Jamie Lee Curtis is a One Piece fan. As soon as she said that, we were like, OK, we have to try and get her on the show. What can we do? And Dr. Kircher, uh, Kir uh, Career, sorry, uh, very lucky uh, is a character who's coming up in our story uh, and is someone who's perfect for Jamie Lee Curtis. So we tried to start manifesting this dream of ours after she won her Oscar. The writer's room sent her a figure of Dr. Curia uh, with a nice note that said, congratulations on your statue. Here's another one to put next to it. I hope to speak to you soon. And she responded uh, that it got a lot of fan interest, uh, commented on it. So we're trying to manifest it. So it doesn't look like it is clear cut yet. There's no real conversations as yet, but they're, they're pretty excited. They really do want to do it. So, season two, writer's room. Um, it's, it's good to go now. It's happening. It's just, you watch something like this. So, the writer's room is up and running this week, right? The writer's room is up and running, yes. Getting scripts done so that we can get into design work, scheduling, and pre-production. All that kind of stuff. They're really going full pelt. Really, really, really going full pelt. Is there an overarching theme for season two? Without saying too much, speaking to any new characters that we might meet, I would say a major theme that we're working with in season two is the challenge of leadership. I love this stuff. Love this stuff. It's so good to see. You know, when you see something like this, you go, right, well, there you go, clearly. That, ladies and gents, that is why this did so well. I mean, this is such a big interview as well. There's so much to go into here. Again, you know, were you surprised by the magnitude of the show's success? To be completely honest with you, yes. And it's not because I was not confident in the work that anyone on the show did. I'm so proud to be a part of the production and to work with the people that I got to work with. I knew we were making a good show. But there was a big hill for us to climb with how beloved One Piece is, with how much mistrust there is in anime adaptations. Again, someone that understands. I didn't sleep for two days before release because I didn't, uh, I didn't not know what to expect with this labour of love. There's been such a big part of my life, uh, you know, and also I'm a peasant. So I was expecting the word peasant. Maybe it means pessimist. I don't know. Uh, expecting the worst anyway. So again, does someone say thankful? You know, someone who is thankful. I'm so grateful uh, that people see what we've been trying to do and they appreciate it. I love hearing people say my mom's not into anime, but I got her to watch this and she loves the show. That's the success. I'm over the moon at the numbers, the data, all that is great, especially because what's going to get us more seasons, but it's people who love, who see the love that went into it. Uh, and if people find the ability to share the story of One Piece with others, that to me is the success of the show. What a lovely interview. What a nice chap. And that, ladies and gents, is why this was a success.